Okay, let's talk about the Oklahoma subject area test. And the specific uh, OSAT test we're going to be talking about is the elementary education. And uh, as part of that particular test, we're going to be talking about the subtest too. And there is the test code. So very specific uh, topic we're going to be discussing in this brief video. And if you're watching this video, I assume you are preparing to be an elementary education teacher in Oklahoma, and obviously you are required or been told you have to take this test. So we're going to be talking about the subtest two, uh, which is, uh, again, the code is 051, and specifically the, uh, the math section, a part of that particular certification exam. So um, what we're going to be doing here is taking a look at a math practice problem that you should be able to handle pretty well if you're fully prepared for this particular um, exam. But before we get going, let me go ahead and introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tappa Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher and over several years I've constructed many online math courses, very comprehensive math courses, to include an Oklahoma subject area test, elementary education, subtest to uh, 051 test prep course. I'm going to leave the link to that in a description of this video. And uh, the way I construct my test prep courses, I actually go in uh, and research, you know, the uh, specifications that are gonna be on the test, a particular type of math, and try to create a very customized math course. So I don't wanna give you uh, too much math. I don't wanna give you too less math because there's other um, OSAT uh, uh, certification exams. All depends on what you're gonna be teaching whether you're gonna be teaching um, middle school or high school, et cetera. So the math requirement could, can change dramatically, okay? So for this particular uh, test, I would kind of classify the math that you need to know as kind of high school level mathematics. Maybe not super, super advanced, but you're definitely gonna to have to be strong in algebra and geometry and other topics as well. So uh, a problem like we're gonna take a look at here uh, falls into basic high school kind of level math. So let's get into the problem. And here we have an equation. Uh, so obviously I'm going to solve it, but the way I like to kind of do these videos is give you an opportunity to uh, pause the video, you know, think about it. You, you know, uh, you should try to do the problem on your own. Don't go to Google. Don't look up how to do it. Just kind of go by memory. You got to play around with it. Even if you're not sure you know, think about if you were given this problem, how might you kind of approach it? <laughs> so uh, that's the first kind of phase of this video. Then I'm going to give you a little bit of a hint here in a second uh, to kind of help you along. Uh, then obviously I'm going to solve the problem. Okay, so uh, if you don't want to hear the hint, go ahead and pause the video and try it. Uh, try the problem. So now I'm going to give you a hint. All right, so here, um, let's take a look. Obviously we have an equation, right? So let's take a look at a more basic example. So let's get rid of that square root. So if I had 2x is equal to 10, hopefully you would know that, oh, okay, I have to divide both sides of the equation by 2, so x would be equal to 5, okay? So same thing here with this particular equation. What you want to do, uh, you're not solving for x. What you're, you're going to be doing is trying to isolate the square root or the radical, okay? So you're going to be left with just radical x equals some number. So when you're dealing with radical or square root equations, this is the first kind of um, phase of the problem, okay? So basically isolate the radical. So now when you isolate that radical, how do you solve this problem, okay? So I want you to think about that. I'm gonna obviously uh, show you here in a second, and this is just a basic example of these type of problems, but let's just take a look at this equation, square root of x equals uh, 4, okay? So let's just kind of discuss this, what this means algebraically. The square root of x, now remember x is a variable, and in algebra, variables just basically represents a number, okay? So what if I just came up to you and I said, hey, excuse me, um, the square root of what number is 4, Okay. Do you know what that is? <laughs> uh, what is my my calculator is telling me four? I took the square root of some number and our answer was four. Okay. Hopefully you'd be like, oh yeah, if you take the square root of sixteen, the answer is four. It's technically positive negative four, but you kind of get my drift here, right? So 
you know, looking at this, you can kind of, you know, just deduce what the answer may be. But there's a little bit more of a formal way we want to go ahead and uh, approach radical equations. And these little things here are called radicals or square roots. So with that being said, let me go ahead and solve this real basic uh, problem. And then we'll wrap up this video. So, okay, so again, first thing you want to do is to isolate uh, this square root of x part. So I'm going to divide both sides of the equation by 2. So I get the square root of x is equal to 5. So again, I could say the square root of what number is 5? So hopefully, you you know, the answer is 25, right? Oh, the square root of 25 is 5. Again, the square root of 25. When you're taking the square root of a real number, you, you have two answers. You have a positive and negative 5 because uh, positive 5 times positive 5 is positive 25. And negative 5 times negative 5 is also a positive 25. So this is the real, the most like technical, most accurate, complete answer. But, you know, just to kind of, um, you know, I don't want to get too deep into this topic because there's other things that come up when you're talking about square root um, uh, equations or radical equations. But just want to kind of keep it basic here. But I just I wanted, again, just to reiterate, when you're taking the square root of real number, there are two solutions like this. All right, but let's get back to our problem. So I have the square root of x is equal to 5. Now, in this case, it's pretty easy because you're thinking, oh, the square root of some number is 5. Oh, that's 25. But what you really... Um, are doing mathematically is you want to you want to get to x right we want to solve for x but I have a square root here so the way to get rid of that square root is to square a square root so if I square uh, this square root of x I'm left with x but if I square the left hand side I also got to square the right hand side so 5 squared is 5 times 5 is 25 and that is our solution so anyways um Again, this is a real basic example or basic level square root equation. Okay, something definitely you should be able to uh, uh, handle if you're fully prepared for the subtest two um, on this particular Oklahoma subject area test. Okay, now if you got this right, that's excellent. Okay, uh, if you didn't need a hint and you understood what you were doing, that's fantastic. But yeah, by no means is that complete verification or validation that you're ready for everything that's on this test. Okay, there's a lot of other um, material that is on all the math topics, other math topics is on here. Now, if you didn't get this right, if you struggle with it, don't panic. Just use it as feedback to get serious about, you know, um, studying. So let's go ahead and wrap up this video. I'm going to go ahead and uh, stress some things I like to do um, in all these videos. Again, I'm going to go ahead and leave a link to this particular OSAT uh, um, test, this uh, 051, my math prep course for it in the uh, description of this video, so you can check that out. But I'm gonna leave you with these comments. Um, if you were new to teaching, and you may or may not be new to teaching, uh, one, you wanna take all certification exams very seriously, okay? I'm sure you are just by virtue of you watching this video, but what I mean by that is uh, don't underestimate any exam, okay? And I think at the elementary level, especially with mathematics, a lot of elementary uh, school teacher candidates or people who haven't taken these exams might kind of think that, well, you know, maybe I just need to know elementary level math, you know, place value, decimals, fractions. Of course, you need to know all that. But you really need to take a look at what's on the exams. Uh, and again, uh, most elementary level uh, certification exams throughout the United States, depending on what state you're in, um, are going to require you to know a, a good amount of high school level math. Okay, so uh, just because you're teaching elementary doesn't mean that you're going to escape <laughs> algebra, geometry, etc. So do your due diligence and you know come up with a good study plan. Study hard, so you only have to take this uh, exam once and and move on. Okay, uh, you may or may not know this, but there are plenty of teachers out there that fail the first time out and have to go back uh, a second time or a third time to actually pass the exams. If you study correctly the first time out, you won't be one of those teachers. So anyways, um, you know, I'd just like to kind of stress that point. But uh, if you're new to my channel, uh, hopefully consider subscribing. I've been on YouTube several years. I already have on my channel several 
you know, 100 videos that can help you prepare for this particular exam. So hopefully you'll check that out. If you liked the video, definitely appreciate a thumbs up. And leave me some feedback. Uh, are you uh, coming from a different level of teaching uh, or maybe a different state? Are you new to teaching? Are you coming right out of college, uh, right from high school to college to teaching? Or maybe you're doing a career transition, you know, coming from one career uh, into teaching. So, um, you know, these days there's a lot of different ways you can become a teacher. I think that's actually a good thing because we need as many good teachers as possible. And uh, I always like to kind of throw in my little two cents um, to kind of show my, you know, support for fellow teachers is that, you know, being a teacher is, uh, it's challenging work, but it's also rewarding, okay? Um, and unless you have actually been a classroom teacher, uh, everybody thinks they know uh, what it's like because <laughs> they see a teacher in the classroom. That, oh, I could do that. Oh, and you get summers off as well and uh, et cetera. But, you know, that's just kind of goes with the territory. But generally speaking, unless you've actually been a classroom teacher and dealt with uh, the pressures of, um, you know, uh, and responsibilities of, you know, educating real live students in a classroom. And even though during this time there's a lot of remote learning going on, you know, it's a, uh, it's a, it's an important, uh, uh, role that you play in our, you know, society. Okay. So you should take a lot of pride in that. But again, it's a profession that you really have to, you know, uh, work hard at, and that's why you have to get through these certification exams. But with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your education adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.